Hyperthermia is a new thermal therapy for cancer which has been producing good therapeutic results with the development of new types of heating equipment. Here we will review the latest developments such as the biological principles utilized, clinical applications and therapeutic results. This is an experiment that reveals the characteristics of cancer tissue in order to understand the principles of hyperthermia. These are mammalian cancer cells in vitro at 37 degrees centigrade, which is approximately normal body temperature. At this temperature, cancer cells grow by repeated division. The activity gradually decreases as the temperature elevates. This is the activity at 42 degrees centigrade. At 44 degrees centigrade, activity has completely stopped and the cancer cells have been destroyed. This is the cell survival curve. At 41 degrees or 42 degrees centigrade, cell survival is hardly reduced, even when heat has been applied for 120 minutes or more. But at 43 degrees centigrade, the cell killing effect due to heating is obvious. The temperature of 43 degrees centigrade is almost the same as, or a little higher than that of warm bath water. Why is cancer tissue alone damaged? We have noted that the blood flow through the tissue being heated reveals the cause. This is a graph illustrating the increase in blood flow in normal skin and normal muscle and in tumors during heating. In normal skin and muscle, blood flow increases to keep the body temperature at 37 degrees centigrade, while in the tumor, where blood vessels are not controlled by nerves, blood flow is less responsive and rather than increasing, decreases. Though the blood flow in such a case acts to remove heat from normal tissue in order to cool it, the tumor is not sufficiently cooled. Moreover, with its poor blood supply, the oxygen supply to tumor cells is reduced and the amount of lactic acid increases. As a result, the tumor tends to become acidic further promoting cell sensitivity to heat. Such variation in blood flow produces the difference in temperature at which damage occurs between normal tissue and tumor tissue. This means that thermal therapy at about 43 degrees centigrade does not injure normal tissue but does destroy tumors. At present, hyperthermia is most widely used in combination with radiotherapy for hyperthermia not only greatly promotes the effects of radiotherapy but also circumvents its shortcomings. First, it promotes sensitivity. Cancer cells are more effectively destroyed by radiation in combination with heating to about 43 degrees centigrade than by the application of radiation alone. Moreover, the application of heat and radiation need not occur simultaneously. However, cells may become heat tolerant. A cell becomes heat tolerant when it is heated again 6 to 24 hours after the first heating, or when it is first heated at a low temperature of about 42 degrees centigrade and then to a higher temperature, such as 44 degrees centigrade. Fortunately for the clinical situation, 
This heat tolerance is a temporary phenomenon and disappears within two or three days. Thus, there is no problem when heating is confined to once or twice a week. The treatment of large tumors can be complicated by presence of viable radioresistant hypoxic tumor cells, where oxygen-poor cells resist radiation. By the efficient capacity of cells to repair injury caused by radiation, and by variations in mitotic cycle-specific dependent radiation sensitivity. Several techniques are being developed to circumvent the above limiting factors in radiation therapy. These techniques include the use of different types of radiation, such as oxygen effect independent high LET radiation, and the use of hypoxic cell chemical sensitizers or repair inhibitors, but these are still under investigation. Hyperthermia may potentially resolve all of these problems since it is effective regardless of the oxygen level and heat can depress repair activity. Furthermore, although a cell may develop high radio resistance in the DNA synthesis phase, it is also highly sensitive to heat and thus the problem of the mitotic cycle can be resolved. Hyperthermia and radiotherapy complement each other at the structural level of the tumor. Radiation is effective on areas near blood vessels which are rich in oxygen. In contrast, hyperthermia is less effective in low temperature areas near blood vessels, but is much more effective in parts distant from the vessels where heat dispersion is less efficient. Thus, the combination of both therapies is most advantageous. There have been many studies done on the number of applications, dose, and the order of heating and radiation. It is recommended now as standard protocol to apply heat twice a week at 42.5 degrees centigrade for 40 to 60 minutes after radiation. The higher the temperature, the shorter the heating time. Hyperthermia can be used together with chemotherapy. Chemotherapeutic agents are usually given systematically, but their effects can be promoted by elevating the temperature of the cancer. The reason for this is now being investigated. Generally, it is supposed that by elevating the temperature, the permeability of cells to a drug is increased, permitting the drug to enter cancer cells at higher levels with stronger effect. Drugs such as mitomycin C, cisplatin, adriamycin, and 5-FU are frequently used. This is the cell survival rate in an experiment using 3 micrograms per milliliter of cisplatin together with hyperthermia. At 37 degrees centigrade, no inactivation of tumor cells is seen. After elevating the temperature, the effect of tumorocytals is greatly increased. Specifically, at a temperature of 41 to 42 degrees centigrade, their effect is significantly increased. There are several types of hyperthermia. In the clinical setting, it is divided into whole body hyperthermia and local hyperthermia. This is a depiction of typical whole body hyperthermia employed in Japan. The blood is directly heated by external circulation to elevate the body temperature. This method may be used together with chemotherapeutic agents and shows promise for cancer therapy in the future. But various problems still remain to be solved and are now under investigation. In local hyperthermia, heating is performed by electromagnetic waves and the characteristics vary depending upon the radio frequency employed. This apparatus uses electromagnetic waves of 2,450 megahertz. The energy is concentrated at a spot near the surface. In this apparatus, with many pairs of electrodes around the body, electromagnetic waves of about 70 megahertz are discharged against a central area to heat it. Another method used is capacitance with a low frequency, highly permeable electromagnetic wave. 
The part to be heated is placed between two parallel opposed electrodes and an electric current is applied. It can selectively heat different areas at various depths by combining large and small electrodes.